it has come now yeah 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 play please audio is not coming audio is not coming Therapeutic tea non spatch craft with Gore-Tex for perforated corneal ulcers. Eye banking is going through a turmoil nowadays. We will have to live with the pandemic for an extended period of time. We have lost the luxurious era of using donor corneas for treating corneal ulcers. Looking into the options of managing perforated ulcers, tissue adhesives, conjunctival flaps, amniotic membrane graft are ideal for smaller perforations. For larger perforations with a tissue loss, patch grafts or therapeutic grafts are ideal. We have used Tenon's patch and the Gore-Tex for a 50-year-old female patient who presented to us with a peripheral perforated corneal ulcer of size 5 into 5.5 mm. Tenon's has many advantages. It is an autologous tissue, hence does not cause immune reaction or rejection. There is no heterologous antigenic sensitization, hence corneal grafting if performed later is more likely to succeed. It easily gets incorporated in the corneal wound. Hence this tissue does not rely on the donor cornea or the eye bank. Now, the tenons was harvested from the superior quadrant in our case. The size was taken slightly larger than that of the perforation. The epithelium, the necrotic tissue surrounding the perforation was debrided without injuring the lens and the iris tissue. Even though this procedure carries 75% success rate, there are few disadvantages. In such large perforations, there is always a risk of plugging back of the iris into the site of the tenons, or tenons displacement can occur. Here, tenons was placed over the defect and secured well with tenon nylon sutures. Amniotic membrane was covered over the tenons to promote epithelization. Amniotic membrane also was secured with tenu nylon sutures. On attempting AC reformation, the fluid leaked through the gap. Hence, we thought of using Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is an expanded polytetrafluoroethylene material. It can act as an adjuvant and give a mechanical support for the tenons in sealing the perforation. Gore-Tex is chemically inert, non-antigenic material that is well tolerated, used in various fields of ophthalmology. Gore-Tex can be kept in place for 4 weeks till the wound healing is complete. Post-operatively, low-dose oral steroids in tapering doses for 2 weeks, topical antibiotics, antifungals and cyclopegics are continued. Tenons and Gore-Tex will facilitate the wound integrity till the keratoplasty is planned. Amniotic membrane is covered over the Gore-Tex. The peripheral PI is made. AC was thoroughly washed. Intracanal antibiotics antifungals were given. Anterior chamber was tightly formed. One week later, the anterior chamber was well formed and I was quiet with the Gore-Tex sensitive, avoiding the need for urgent keratoplasty. Thank you. Thank you, Anita, for that wonderful presentation. You could stop sharing the screen. So all to you, you judges. Yes, Dr. Chitra. Sir, I want to make few uh, uh, points. Yeah, Anita, Shall go ahead. I? Yes, sir. This patient actually came to us during the lockdown period. So she was a farmer and farmers were still working during that period. And uh, the problem we faced was uh, many colony ulcers came, but uh, uh, all the uh, patients they presented very late to us with either with a perforation or with a decimatose. So uh, we had to do some kind of surgical intervention to retain the globe integrity. So for the smaller perforation, uh, the tenons and the uh, cyanoacrylate glue were uh, uh, working very well, but for a larger perforations like this, tenons alone did not work. So we thought of using this Gore-Tex, and Gore-Tex, uh, we are familiar with that material for past like, five years. It is an inert, non-antigenic, and moreover, it resists infection. Surface is very smooth, and so it doesn't cause any irritation to the patient, and uh, it can be used to cover unlimited surface area also. So we use this uh, material for this patient only for two reasons. 
One was to give a mechanical strength uh, and support to the underlying tenons to close such a large perforation. Another was this uh, cortex acted as a bandage contact lens. It promoted uh, an aided epithelization to the underlying tenons. That's all. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a yes, question? Yes, Dr. Vishali. Yeah, please Thank go you ahead. very much for your video. Just one quick question. Has anybody, nobody tried it before? Yes, ma'am. Nobody had tried it before. Actually, Gore-Tex is being used for uh, recurrent erysium management and uh, for semifront prevention, ma'am. Okay. So we had used it for the first time. Okay, thank you. Um, Gore-Tex is, is certainly an inert material, but my concern is that as the, um, your, uh, um, the material gets exposed once the um, absorption of the um, thing takes, I mean, absorption of the upper layer takes place, then you would have a um, foreign body sensation due to Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is not as soft as a contact lens. That would be my concern. So would but you actually... cover it with the amniotic membrane to prevent yes, it? Membrane, yes, but amniotic membrane would resolve in a little while. It would not stay. Oh, okay. So I was wondering whether uh, contact lens on top of that may, may yeah. still be a choice. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, Gore-Tex materials are available in different uh, uh, the, uh, materials and uh, sizes, everything, sir. Yeah. So we had used a particular thing, Preclude, which is a replacement for a, a reconstruct, used for a reconstructive procedure in uh, pericardial tissues. So uh, that material, actually, we, uh, we haven't seen so, till now that the position of, uh, I agree, so like amniotic membrane, it uh, uh, comes out very fast. Yeah. Amniotic membrane, normally when you do a tenens patch graft, actually we do put a bandage contact lens, but uh, we have to remove it over a period of time. And another thing with Gortex, I just want to know, what was the epithelization? Did it epithelize well over the Gortex? Yes, ma'am. Until the, actually, we keep the cortex for only four weeks, ma'am. After that, we remove it, and we find an underlying uh, tenons epithelized completely, and it get incorporates into the corneal tissue, and the AC was will be definitely well formed. And how many cases have you done up till now with combined? Until Got yeah, it. combined, uh, we have done one to two cases only, but uh, we have done many uh, tenons for smaller perforations for such a larger perforations. Uh, uh, we did only two cases, ma'am. Any post or picture, Anita? Yes, sir, I can share. So, Tenen's patch graph did expand the uh, uh, the uh, area of perforation that could be sealed earlier. We could seal with the help of glue up to three millimeters. Then Tenen's patch graph, we did show that you can seal up to 4.5 or 5 millimeters. Maximum we've done is up to five millimeters, but uh, of course with the bandage contact lens. This Gore-Tex, yes. Okay. Could you use uh, glue to stick it rather than uh, sutures, uh, Anita? Uh, glue. Uh... Fibrin glue, if you had used instead of teno nylon, um, yes, you see, it's very difficult. The amniotic membrane is very very fragile. So when you pass yes, the, the suture, uh, it tends to roll up. And it's extremely difficult to pass so many 10-0 nylon sutures to fix the amniotic membrane onto the perforation. Instead, if you use fibrin glue, it sticks immediately. Yes, and you can use a larger graph and stick it. It anyway gets absorbed within a week. Nothing is left after a week. Yes, Yes, yeah, concern. My concern was, did you inject antibacterial, antifungal, and treated antibacterial empirically or it was culture proven of mixed infection? Yes, sir. Uh, first, we uh, actually we gave that those necrosed uh, tissue everything for. Can, can you just unshare your screen and then, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we gave those uh, uh, tissues which we cut during the surgery uh, to the uh, uh, microbiology and we found out it was a streptococcus pneumonia. Dr. Sivagami, uh, sorry, Dr. Anita, my yes, question sir. is, uh, how do you monitor the disease once you put a Gore-Tex patch on top? You know, it's a completely opaque uh, kind of thing. So how do you monitor the margin or how do you uh, monitor what is going on underneath? That was one question. And the second is, once you've used uh, tenons over such a large area, 
uh, have you had any kind of a fibrous ingrowth or something like that? Because uh, you know it is basically fibrous tissue and vascular fibrous tissue at that. So there is a possibility of even that happening. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, fibrous ingrowth can occur. What you say is correct, but uh, tenons is an autologous tissue, so it may uh, it definitely it may uh, uh, incite a fibrous reaction, but maybe it is minimal, sir. So we can uh, actually the point want I wanted to uh, stress upon is that we can do a, a keratoplasty earlier and uh, that, uh, before the uh, the when we do a therapeutic keratoplasty, it needs a longer time for a, a penetrating keratoplasty. But for this. Uh, if we manage with the tenons and uh, this type of uh, procedures, can we can manage? We can do an optical keratoplasty even more earlier than the uh, TPKs. So I think uh, looking to the positive time. Thank you, Anita. We now move on to our next presenter. Thank and, you. And uh, the next.